You're listening to That Gets My Goat on the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazine. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of That Gets My Goat. I'm Big Anklevich, and here with me is... Rish Outfield. Oh, sounds like Rish Outfield has sent his uh, phone app to uh, be here in his place. They are getting very smart these days. Happy to speak to you, Big Anklevich. Oh, no, it turns out he sent his speaking spell to take his place. Sorry, uh, I'm, I, I got to the phone just in time. Oh, good, good. All right, well, welcome, Rich Outfield. <laughs> and welcome to all you listeners out there in listener land. Uh, t- <laughs> today on That Gets My Goat, we're talking uh, superhero movies. I bet that's a big surprise to you. You would have had no idea that we would talk something like that on this show. But we're doing it. We're going to buck the trend. And uh, apparently there's some big news going on in uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe going on with a certain uh, amazing Spider-Man. Or is it Spider-Man? Is that how they say it? Irving Spider-Man. Attorney at law. All right. Uh, so Irving Spiderman, attorney at law, uh, is is into some kind of legal contract trouble going on right now. Can you can you inform the listeners and uh, by proxy me because I'm really not all that <laughs> well versed in what's going on and uh, as to what the big hubbub is. I can, but my worry is that it, that the news is going to change. And this episode's going to be terribly dated. By the time I got it, get it all edited, we'll be like, ah, I don't know, this, this isn't even accurate anymore. I, and then we'll just we'll just want to delete the whole thing. Yeah, I can see that being an issue, <laughs> especially considering that our our episodes usually come out a month or so after they're recorded. Hmm. Um, well, we could just put it out as is. And, you know, maybe people would still listen, even though we say, um, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, yeah, uh, uh, a lot. Um, you, you think they'd handle that? You think they would be willing for the uh, immediacy of the pressing subject? Well, see, I don't know if that bothers them or not. It bothers the crap out of me. But, uh, yeah, if we can release it unedited then we could release it right now while it's still timely and then yeah. when things change tomorrow um, before we get it out <laughs> yes probably it's still the case <laughs> then at least i won't have wasted several hours we'll only have wasted an hour oh yeah there you go <laughs> instead of 20 <laughs> so yeah let, let's talk about spider-man for a minute um the news is, and it was leaked by Deadline uh, dot com, that whatever you call it, uh, when when two parties are, are negotiating, that, that that talks fell through between Sony and Disney, or if you want to say Sony and Marvel Studios, about the future of Spider Man, and the, you know how it is. Sp- Sony lent Marvel Studios Spider-Man for Civil War uh, and then in return Marvel Studios produced Spider-Man Homecoming for Sony. Now Sony paid for it but Marvel Studios made it and then Marvel used Spider-Man in the two Avengers sequels and then Marvel made Spider-Man Far From Home for Sony. And that was all that was part of the contract was, you know, up to this point, this is our deal, and then we'll renegotiate after that. But these negotiations okay. have broken down. Because Marvel the, came and said, that was never part of the deal. I am altering the deal. Pray I don't <laughs> alter it any further. <laughs> The deal just keeps I getting think. worse all the time. <laughs> and and if if uh, sources are to be believed, it was something very similar to that. Disney said, hey, uh, 
currently the deal has been that you make these spider that you pay for these Spider-Man movies. You pay 100% and you distribute them and you do all the advertising and all that stuff. We will make it, but you're paying for it. And in return, we get 5% of the grosses. That was the deal up till now. And it seems like a pretty dang good deal for all involved. Uh, that's just my opinion, but it seems like, well, yeah, that's, that's great. Um, Sony never owned the rights for the merchandising for Spider-Man. Marvel has o- always owned that. And so like all the figures and posters and shirts and hats that they sell, uh, Disney essentially gets all that. So, you know, it's win-win for them, I, I suppose. You know, Sony has a hit movie and Disney gets all of this merchandising. But for their, their, their renegotiation of the contract, Disney said, this is what we want to do. And, and I keep saying Disney, but Disney is the parent company. Um, and it's easier to say Disney. But, it, you know, it's really Marvel Studios we're talking about, which is its own separate company that makes movies, right? They mm-hmm. just happen to be owned by the Walt Disney Company. Regardless, Marvel Studios said, this is what we would like to do now, is we would like to put up half the money for forthcoming Spider-Man-related projects. So not just Spider-Man Homecoming 3, but ostensibly Venom 2 and whatever else they're they're doing. We will put up half the money and you put up the other half of the money. And then we split the profits 50-50 when it comes out. And Sony turned that down. They said, no, we we don't want to do that. We don't... uh, you know, we, we don't see the benefit of, of doing that in any way. And uh, they walked away from the deal and released a statement that said uh, Kevin Feige, the head of Marvel Studios, uh, is, is not going to be able to continue to produce the Spider-Man projects uh, because of other commitments. And uh, it was funny that it was one of those nice... Nice things. Uh, Let me just read the statement. Much of today's news about Spider-Man has mischaracterized recent discussions about Kevin Feige's involvement in the franchise. We are disappointed, but respect Disney's decision not to have him continue as a producer on our next live-action Spider-Man film. We hope this might change in the future, but understand that the many new responsibilities that Disney has given him, including all their newly added Marvel properties, do not allow time for him to work on IP they do not own. Kevin is terrific, and we are grateful for his help and guidance, and appreciate the path he has helped put us on, which we will now continue. Uh, and so that, that was their statement, and... Ultimately, what that means is that Sony will continue to make their Spider-related movies, but without the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe tie-ins. So what they did last year with Venom, they did that completely on their own, and that is where all the Spider-Man projects are now going to be. Uh, But that also means that Disney is no longer available or no longer able to use Spider-Man and his characters in the cinematic universe. Okay, so that's the basic uh, what happened, right? Yeah, was that over an over explanation or was it an under explanation? Are there still questions of, you know, the details on that? Um, I don't know. I, f- I find it uh, an interesting thing. And yeah, I mean, like you said, that the news could change at any time. Just because they walked away from the deal now doesn't mean they're not going to come back and try again. Uh, I can't imagine that Sony doesn't see the value of what's going on. I mean, they tried doing their Spider-Man stuff on their own. They tried 
Amazing Spider-Man and Amazing Spider-Man 2, and each one was worse than the last. And maybe... Uh, Maybe they think that they have have the golden goose now, because how much did did uh, Venom make? It made a lot of money, right? Like eight hundred million or something, all all told. That sounds right. I, I mean, if I had to give you an exact number, I'd say eight hundred and fifty six million. But uh, <laughs> but you don't need an exact number, do you? No, so please don't say that. Okay, good. Um, and I think that that is their their thought, is, look, we made Venom without Kevin Feige's involvement at all. And that was a huge hit for us, plus it didn't cost very much, and we don't have to share anything on that. Um, and that, you know, that's their also, attitude. They also did the into the spider verse cartoon yes they did did pretty well i think and it it, won best animated feature for at the oscars people are very uh people really like it i saw some people went in discussion uh boards and stuff talking about this news saying well into the spider verse is the best thing uh of all so if they made that then i'm I'm happy with whatever they might make in the future because that, I just want more like that or something. You know, and, and see, that's a fair assessment. I have been comparing Venom and Spider-Man Far From Home, saying, okay, this is one that was made with Marvel Studios' involvement, and this is one that was made without. Um, I mean, you can't even compare them. I don't care how much money they made. One is really, really good, and the other is... But maybe... Yeah. Far from, not Far From Home. Maybe Into the Spider-Verse is the better comparison. Because Into the Spider-Verse was very, very good. But the, the thing about Venom, too, is that I think if Spider-Man Far From Home had not come out and Spider-Man had not been in... Uh, Civil War and Avengers and all that stuff that when Venom came out it would have hit it would have landed with a thud and no one would remember it at all you know what I mean it would be as remembered as Hancock Um, you know it, it I think the majority of what it made was all based on the fact that this is a Spider-Man character and the several Marvel Studios Spider-Man movies were really good. And people, most people just don't, they don't know. You know what I mean? It's like we used to complain about people who'd be like, oh yeah, uh, that that new Pixar movie Madagascar just came out. I went and saw that. I thought it was really funny. I love Pixar movies. My favorite was Madagascar and uh, Dougal. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just pulling our hair out over here going, those aren't Pixar movies, you idiots! Um, I think the majority of people are just, you know, they're normies. They don't know comic books. They don't know uh, movie ins and outs. They don't know who uh, goes with what, who's behind what. They just see, oh, there's a Spider-Man movie coming out. I will go and see that because I like Spider-Man. I saw the last one and it was good. And I think that, truthfully, is the, uh, you know, the real impetus behind the success that Venom had. And, you know, it didn't get good reviews. I don't think a lot of people thought it was particularly good. Um, and I would, I would say that once Spider-Man detaches himself from the Marvel Universe, you're only going to need one or two of those. And Spider-Man will be right back in the toilet where he was after Amazing Spider-Man 2. Where they're just like, eh, I guess Spider-Man. Nobody wants to see Spider-Man. We're just going to stop Spider-Man movies altogether. Yeah, we've we've talked about this, maybe not on the air, but we've certainly talked in person that Sony had this idea of doing a whole Spider-Verse 
series of movies. And the first one was Venom, and they were going to do a Morbius movie, and they were going to do a Craven the Hunter movie, and they were going to do a Silver Sable and Black Cat movie, and eventually they were going to do a Sinister Six movie. Do you remember? Yeah. And, uh, and you know, of Amazing like Spider-Man 2 going to do. seemed like it was totally the introduction to that. When they had the rhino and they had like three bad guys all going, all right, we're going to get you, Spider-Man. And then the movie ended. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> but sorry, I interrupted you. Go on. Oh, no, no. I just, you know, this is something that they were developing without Marvel on their own. Saying, you know, that this is a uh, a world bigger than the Marvel Cinematic Universe, or or a world that can survive without the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I don't know, Venom is the only one of those to ever come out, or you can say Into the Spider-Verse, but I don't know that it should... You know, it's like apples and oranges. It really is a different thing, because it was an animated movie. Um, you know, in the same way that, like, Batman Mask of the Phantasm is never considered one of the theatrical Batman movies like, you know, Batman and Robin and, and Returns and, you know, Begins and, and all those other movies, even though it was a theatrically released Batman movie, it's just not, it's not lumped in with the others. Um, but, but one thing that has been really interesting is that there have been a lot of supporters for Sony that have become really, really vocal since this news came out. And to me, that, that surprised me. I, I am just a big fan of Marvel Cinematic Universe and Kevin Feige in particular. I mean, this guy is the most successful film producer of all time. And he's only been working for, what, 12 years? And uh, it just, I enjoy the Marvel Cinematic Universe so much. And a big part of why I enjoy it is because it rewards you for having watched the other movies and for paying attention and for remembering that, oh, this is the guy that was after Bruce Banner in that first Hulk movie. And here he is again, you know, that kind of thing. Which I just, I don't know. I feel like I appreciate when... uh filmmakers give me credit for something or reward me for having paid attention for not just texting while the movie was playing and so that's one of the wonderful things and you know not every movie that marvel cinematic universe has put out has been great but they've all been varying levels of good and or great um and so Instantly, my allegiance is with them, with Kevin Feige. Um, but I hear some of these people say, you know, oh, Disney, they have to ruin everything. Friggin' Disney. First, they ruined Star Wars. And now they've ruined Spider-Man. And it's just like, F Disney. I, I, I can't wait for Sony to have Spider-Man back and bring him back to his former glory and I I was surprised to hear that. I remember how joyful I felt back in, let's say it was 2014 or early 2015, when we found out that Spider-Man was going to be joining the Marvel Cinematic Universe and just, oh, wow, you know, he's back where he belongs. I, it's kind of like, you know, you're a sports guy and there's some player that you love and he gets traded away and you loved him and he's gone and then you hear, like, two years later that he's coming back. And you're just like, well, yeah, he never should have left. Um, and I'm I, sorry, I don't, I don't really watch sports, so I don't understand that analogy. Oh, Do you have gosh, one that, that, that would make case. more sense to me? <laughs> you just alienated all of our audience. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I know exactly how you feel. Yeah, it's it's uh, it was great, especially. I mean, we had just seen Amazing Spider-Man two, uh, not long before that announcement, and we did one of these get that gets my goats about it, and we had a lot of negative things to say about that movie. That movie was just bad. It was plain bad, 
Uh, and I was just kind of glad to see uh, when Sony was just like, well, yeah, maybe we need to just stop bothering with these Spider-Man movies because people don't seem to like Spider-Man. Maybe we'll let him rest for a while. Doing like what Disney's doing with Star Wars. We're like, oh, we must have made too many Star Wars movies and people have Star Wars fatigue. And so we're going to stop making Star Wars. Uh, You know, that's the lesson that they usually get out of things like that rather than maybe we should make better Spider-Man movies than this. Uh... And yeah, it was really exciting to see him come into the to the universe because Spider-Man is so central to the Marvel universe. You know, he's in everything. Um, everything basically revolves around him. He's the main character, and then there's other people that uh, you know are also involved. You know, he's the guy that guests in everybody's book and has like three or four or five of his own going on at the same time. So. It feels kind of weird to have a Marvel Cinematic Universe with no Spider-Man in it. And it was really cool when he showed up. And uh, to see him, so, especially considering the ending that uh, Spider-Man Far From Home had, you know, it left you there going, oh crap, what's going to happen next? And I assume if Sony is leaving, you know, they're taking their their ball and going home, that they're going to be the ones continuing that? Yeah, I I think that's exactly what's happening. And that, they are the last ones that I trust to do a good job with that. What other properties does Sony have out there? Do they have anything uh, else that, you know, is an ongoing thing or that... Well, until this year, their most successful franchise was James Bond. Uh, but finally, Spider-Man eclipsed that. Um, uh, Skyfall was previously the most successful Sony film, and now it's uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. Um, and then they also have the Ghostbusters franchise. Okay, yeah, they did a good job with that one. Which, <laughs> yeah, I guess... <laughs> the, <laughs> We can continue to talk about that. Uh, they had the Men in Black franchise. But, oh, uh, yeah, they did a good job with that one. <laughs> yeah. It... Yeah, see, they uh, they almost feel like cancer uh, <laughs> when it comes to, to something like that. You know, it's, it's fine, and then they get it, and it's like, oh, it's just turned black and withered away. Uh, it just, I mean, I guess that's with those last two... Uh, franchises that you speak of I mean, james bond i think is doing fine although it's been a while since a james bond movie's come out right i i hear that there's another one coming where it's uh daniel craig's last one right yeah but it takes them so long to make these damned movies they could have done three daniel craig movies between specter and and whatever the next one is going to be called or between you know four in between skyfall and whatever the next one is um, oh, well, I, I, I think that, that that movie will do fine and I'll go see it and I hope that it's really, really good. Uh, it seems like every other one that they release is really, really good. Um, and I don't know why that is. It's not that they set out to make a movie that's not great, although I feel in the case of Quantum of Solace, that is exactly what happened. <laughs> so like, oh, this last one was good. Let's make one that's not. Let's try something completely different. Um, but, yeah, I mean, at Sony is a bunch of different people, a bunch of different studio guys and writers and producers and, and, and all that. Essentially, uh, the, the person at Sony that is involved with the Spider-Man movies is Amy Pascal. She uh, was a producer on, all, I think, all of the Spider-Man movies, the, the Sam Raimi ones as well. And she's sort of risen to be the head of that, that franchise as far as Sony goes. And with 
the Sony Spider with the the last two, the Tom Holland ones, she and Kevin Feige sort of co-produced those. Um, but I don't know how involved she was versus how involved he was. Uh, it sure seems like he was in the driver's seat because they developed those in-house just like they would an Iron Man sequel or something with their guys and their hiring. And Anyhow, how valuable to the, the success of those movies was Kevin Feige? And it's sort of a rhetorical question because we don't really know because he didn't direct them. Mark, not Mark Webb, that was the guy that did the Amazing Spider-Man movies. Gosh, what's, what's the guy's name that did Homecoming and Far From Home? I do not know. We'll call him Bill Smith. And then people can replace that in their mind with the real person's name. Yeah, okay. Uh, so every time you hear Bill listening. Smith, think like uh, John Watts, because that's really yeah. his name. But, you know, Bill Smith directed it. And there were these writers that, that, that worked for it. You know, Kevin Feige didn't write it. How much of an impact is he as a producer? You know, the, the stuff that we liked, was that him? The stuff that worked? The, the things that were better in Homecoming and Far From Home than Amazing Spider-Man 2... Amazing Spider-Man 1, or you, you can go back to Spider-Man 3 if you want. Was that him? And I guess we'll, well find out soon, but I, I, yeah, I, I, I don't guess. know. But it's hard to actually put uh, a finger on him alone because he basically is the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I would say the Marvel Cinematic Universe was a big part of why those were good. If it weren't for that, there would have been no Tony Stark in the first movie and no, uh, I guess, memory of Tony Stark in the second movie. No, there would be no Edith in the, <laughs> the second movie. Um, Nick no Fury also. Happy Hogan, no Nick Fury, uh, no... Scrolls, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, all of that stuff w would be gone, and if they do it, go on and do it without him, will be gone. And somehow, Spider Man really will have to go back to being your friendly neighborhood Spider Man because he can't be part of the bigger universe. Um, the only thing he can do is fight uh, glowing blue Electro again. Or a uh, robot rhino suit guy again, or whatever. Um, you know, I mean, you could you could do fine without the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's possible they could they could do I don't know Craven's Last Hunt or something like that, and you know you could make it really good, but. I don't have any faith in that happening. Uh, they they don't have a great track record. And it seems to me like, yeah, maybe... Uh, and, that, and that may be what Kevin Feige's biggest uh, thing is, is that he finds the right people to work on these shows. He gets the people that are going to really make good movies, that really care about this stuff and will work hard and make it something that people are going to love. And maybe that's all it is. And Sony just doesn't do that. They just don't have uh, the right people. They can't get the right people into the um, the place, uh, into the places of power that would make sure that it turns out good. And so that may be the big, his big, uh, you know, part in the, in the show. Okay. So, I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, as I said a minute ago, he is the most successful, certainly the most successful producer in, in memory. Uh, you know, even Steven Spielberg has had flops on his hands. 
And so I can see Disney saying, whatever this guy wants, he gets. And uh, Sony saying, no, we don't, we don't agree with that. You know, it's not fair that you guys should get even more of our one successful franchise. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, I see. I want to uh, give both of them the benefit of the doubt because, you know, it, it is a good point that uh, Far From Home was universally not yeah, not far from home. The the cartoon, the animated one, Into the Spider Verse was was universally loved, and Venom was very 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 successful. Uh, which so you, I can understand Sony saying we don't need you, we know what we're doing. Um, but we'll see. I just I am disappointed the idea that that we will get a follow up to Far From Home's ending where Spider-Man cannot go to his friends. He can't go to Doctor Strange and say, "Hey, is there anything you can do so that people don't believe that I'm Spider-Man anymore?" You know, that kind of thing. Uh it's a disappointment. It limits the possibilities for that story and it doesn't mean that it will automatically be bad but it's just a shame that we can't have endless possibilities so you guys can do whatever you want on this just write it and then we'll we'll rein it in when we're trying to get the budget down or whatever you know yeah, we'll we'll switch the bad guy from Doctor Doom to Paste Pot Pete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what what I really hope happens is that uh, you know as soon as we after we put this show out and everybody listens to it, then a new announcement is made where like they say, oh yeah, we went, they came back to us with a with a different offer and we were willing to. Uh, you know, they they scaled back what they wanted is for their percentage, and we were willing to accept that and still go forward. Um, and sometimes I, it, something like that might happen. You know, like after Amazing Spider-Man, I and and Ghostbusters and etc. I heard a lot of stuff about how Sony Pictures was doing really badly, and Sony, uh, the parent company, was like. I don't know. We want to keep this Sony Pictures thing going. Uh, maybe it's time to close this this shop down and stop pouring money into it that doesn't come back out uh, like it does for other film uh, studios. So there may be somebody, you know, over there in, uh, I don't know what their headquarters, Tokyo, we'll guess. Uh, may just I say, would think hey, Tokyo, listen, yeah. Man. Could be Osaka. Okay. Gee, you don't know. You don't that's know. A cool, that's a cool <laughs> word. That almost sounds like a real place. Yeah, Osaka. almost. Osaka. But, uh, yeah, it, uh, there could be somebody that just calls, gets on the phone and says, no, listen, take the deal. Do not, you know, blow this again, you dummies. Um. Take the deal or we'll sell all of Spider-Man back to Disney, just like we they did with the X-Men. Uh, I don't know, you know, <laughs> who knows uh, what might happen. It seems like that happens almost every time that Disney has uh, some, some roadblock thrown their way. You may find out as soon as we finish that the next news that comes out is Disney buys Sony. Uh, you know, it's it's happened before. Pixar says, nah, we're we're not down with the deal you got for us. And they're like, okay, well, how about you just how about we just buy the whole company? And they're like, oh, okay, I guess the shareholders approved that, so you're you're in. <laughs> yes, I remember the negotiating guy said, You will make a sequel to Monsters Incorporated. You will make a Toy Story 3. You will record a version of that thing you do in Spanish. <laughs> yeah. And he was using like the Jedi mind trick, which should have should have said something to us about what the future held for a Lucasfilm. 
Um, but yeah, you know, they, they, they've been buying stuff up and buying stuff up. Although I've also heard that Disney may well be in bad financial straits after uh, what has been going on. They've been paying money for a lot of stuff. And, you know, they haven't even started their streaming service yet. They've been buying up all sorts of stuff to be the content on it. But, you know, they haven't gotten any of that money back. And, uh, you know, they had a Star Wars movie that didn't make a big profit. And uh, I've heard that the, the amusement parks aren't doing as well as they have. So, who knows? Uh, maybe they're both in financial pro- troubles. Maybe Disney can't make the deal any sweeter because they need the money that they would get from it. I don't know. But I, I hope that we'll just find out that a deal has been struck shortly after we release this and everyone has listened to it and voiced their own opinion in the comments. But uh, if it doesn't happen, at the very least, I hope that Sony does their level best and actually gets us some Spider-Man movies that aren't terrible. Uh, I suppose they take Tom Holland with them and he's good. I like Tom Holland. So, you know, he could be Spider-Man for, I don't know, feels like at least another 10 years, maybe 20 or 30. Who knows? Maybe he could be like Robert Downey Jr. still doing it when he's freaking gray haired. Um, I guess we'll see. They could do the real Spider-Verse, uh, you know, the live action version when uh, Tom Holland gets as old and fat as the old fat Spider-Man was. They can be just like Disney and do live action versions of all their successful animated films. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, let's let's not encourage that. <laughs> but that's what I hope. Um, yeah, yeah, I think you're. I think you're right. I, I think that some deal will be made. So some kind of compromise will be made. Um, I just. I, I I wonder how much of it is ego, because ego is such a player in Hollywood. It's such a, and maybe it is in every like big business or every realm of of society. It certainly is in politics, right? And then you know, money is a, a huge influencer, and you can never have too much money. Um, but I, 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 I hope that a lot of, that, that at least part of their motivation is that they love these characters, that they are protective of these characters and that they want to make the best product possible. I, is that hopelessly naive? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like Kevin Feige comes it off as a guy. Be who just loves Marvel and loves these characters. And the fact, you know, that he makes multiple millions of dollars off of these characters every year, I, I choose not to think of that as a big motivator, but but it, I, it's got to be. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know that we can rely on uh, too many people that are, are just out in it for the love of the characters to be really involved in the negotiations. Unfortunately, it's going to be all the people who are in it for the, the dollar dollar bills. And, um, yeah, that, that doesn't always work out well for the fans, unfortunately. So I I guess we'll see. I just, I don't want to see Spider-Man go into a tailspin of another five or 10 or 15 years of crap. Um, so I really hope that that doesn't happen. But, you know, I guess you get what you get. Uh, I'm sure uh, if he does go into that tailspin, I'll blink and then that tailspin will be over and, and something will have changed. And, you know, I'll be 65, but it'll feel like yesterday when they had this, when we made this podcast. <laughs> and time flies. Time is flowing like a river to the sea. I think that's Pink Floyd's song, right? Didn't we decide Pink Floyd and definitely not the Alan Parsons Project? Oh, see, I... 
I thought it was uh, Unchained Melody you were quoting. <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, yes, okay, I, yeah, you're right. I mean, ultimately, these things are cyclical. And, I mean, right now, over at DC, at Warner Brothers, you know, that we've gone through a period of unwatchable movies. And uh, they seem to be pulling out of that. And, uh, yeah, pretty soon we'll be super, super excited about the new Batman movie. And it's almost not inconceivable that I'll be excited about a new Superman movie sometime. Uh, and just, Could happen. Yeah, it's just maybe it's Spider-Man's turn again <laughs> to, <laughs> to, uh, to fail Right. I hope not, I but it's going to happen eventually. It's like we, you know, we used to talk about it back when we when Pixar was in its golden age and we talked about how great it was to be in the middle of the golden age of Pixar and we we kind of worried that, you know, sooner or later that golden age would come to an end. And it's happened. It, the golden age is is over. And you know, the, I I I guess we did do a, a show about the last Pixar movie, but we may not have done one about the one before. I don't know. It's it's not uh, the appointment viewing that it used to be. And it's going to happen with Marvel Studios. You know, right now they just finished Endgame and they were, you know, biggest movie ever in the history of the universe. But, you know, they're going to take a downturn. And, you know, Star Wars did a prequel trilogy, so <laughs> everybody has their bad times, the dark times, before the... And wait, that's not right. Anyways. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I hope for the best, but, you know, I guess I'll live through whatever happens. Yeah. That's that's true. Good attitude. Can we really release this without editing it? I think so. I think it'll be fine. People will overlook the, the uh, you know the the, um, the parts uh, where like we um, we can't come up with the, like the um, the words that we want to <laughs> say. I think I think it'll be fine. Okay. Well, I hope that they forgive us uh, <laughs> or <laughs> we'll get comments. Of, I didn't even notice. There's no difference. Yeah. All yeah, the hours that you waste editing, Rich. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, well, hey. We'll I, just stop doing that from here on out if they do. Just be like, nah, we're just not going to edit anything. It's all going straight out. Okay, and your deal. life will change incredibly you'll have all this free time you'll be able to like go outside and go for walks in the sunlight and go to the beach and uh you know kiss a girl for the first time in this century and you know all those kind of things will happen <laughs> all because you don't have to spend all your time slaving away editing a podcast well you have convinced me sir <laughs> so Let's stop recording this and allow me to begin doing those things. All right. Sounds good. Okay, everybody. Uh, this show is over. Thanks for listening to the Doonstief Audio Fiction Magazines. That gets my goat. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rich Outfield, Spider Friends. Good night. Excelsior. Oh, yeah. I remember that gets my goat. That show was produced under what was known at the time as a Creative Commons Attribution No Derivatives 3.0 License. All sounds like gibberish to a young fella like you, don't it? Basically, that was a way of saying that you could download the show, listen to it, share it with others all you wanted, so long as you didn't charge for it or... Try to pass it off as your own. Not that anyone would want to, you understand. Oh, big and rich. They sure did try their best to make a good show. Didn't save them, though. 
not like we had back in 2019. <sighs> I pressed the button. You're listening to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. 